Hello again, everybody. This is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout, and thank you for tuning into this Autism Hangout special report. You know, some people are just given an extra helping of compassion. Fortunately for those of us with special kids, one of these gifted people is helping all of us learn how to thrive with autism. Today's guest is a speech and language pathologist and so much more. In addition to her daily work, somehow she manages to write amazingly helpful contributing books. And now she's just released two more. Back here today to talk about apps for autism and speak, move, play, and learn autism hangout. Please welcome today's special guest, all around wonderful human being, Lois Brady. Hi, Lois. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome, Craig. Thank you very much. That was very nice. Well, it's my pleasure to have you here. And that last book, that Apps for Autism, there's a lot of content in there. I know it just fell on my toe and it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It took a long time to put that together. Well, and it, and it shows. You and I have been fascinated with Apps for Autism for a long time. But unlike me that just talked about them, you actually wrote the book. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration as to why you wanted to take that much time and dedicate that much effort to such a cause. It basically all began with the, um, the eye touch here, mm -hmm. very small eye touch. We were using this with many of our um, students with autism. Mm -hmm. They were fascinated with it, but they couldn't quite manage the smaller screen. So we were actually beta testing the Proloquo to go, mm -hmm. and um, we were um, streaming in Steve Jobs is when he was announcing the iPad. Mm -hmm. So we looked at that and we, I said, oh my gosh, my kids can access that. I'm going to start using that. I went home and ordered it. And when it came, I sat down and started writing a book. I said, everyone really needs to know about this. I need to get the word out to parents and educators and everyone who works with students with autism. Yeah. You and I saw the iPad take the world by storm and suddenly yes. out of nowhere, Literally tens of thousands of these apps came available immediately. But because of that, how did you choose which specific apps to look at? And then how did you go about testing them to find the best? Um, choosing them was easy. I just did a lot of um, um, searches on the web and a lot of searches within iTunes. Mm -hmm. And I loaded them up and took them to school the next day. And luckily, I had a lot of folks there who were willing to help me. I had... Um, other speech language pathologists and occupational therapists and we tested and we have multiple sites and we have multiple students from every age and ability level mm -hmm. and then we would sit down end of the day and discuss what worked and what didn't work and um, what our favorites were and there's a handful of favorites that literally work every single time mm -hmm. and every student we found out has a a group of apps that they will use and every student's group is different so um, it's just kind of knowing your students knowing what's out there and just keep trying luckily um, Craig they're only a dollar two dollars three dollars they're not very much um, many of them have light versions you can try first um, get your kids to sit down next to you mm -hmm. if there's two similar apps and point to the one they would want to try mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as we know, there's literally tens of thousands coming out on a weekly basis. You have the seminal book out there that talks about some of the best at a certain point in time, but how are you keeping everybody up to speed on which are the best today? That's, um, that's very difficult um, because, again, it takes a couple hours every night, and we do go through them, and um, there's many sites out there now, many, many sites that have lists and lists and lists of apps. Um, I want to... Caution people, they'll be careful because sometimes these people who are putting up these sites have not even used these apps. They may not even be educators. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was looking through a site the other day and, and I thought it was a great site. And then a few months later, the lady said, oh, I just now got my first iPad. And I thought, mm, you're recommending apps and you didn't even have an iPad. So we need to be really careful yeah. what sites we look at. Yeah. I have a website where I um, still continue to review the apps with the students and with mm -hmm. other professionals. Mm -hmm. And there's also um, my Facebook page, Apps for Autism, where if a app comes available for free or discount or a new app or a new accessory, I will post it up on there and let folks know what's available. Yeah, while we're at it, Lois, uh, the website right now that you are using to talk about new apps as they appear, can we give that address? Yes, it's um, www.proactivespeechtherapy.com. 
www.thepeopleshow.com. Excellent. Thank you so much for doing what you do in that arena. Now, let's talk about your second book, Speak, Move, Play, and Learn with Children on the Autism Spectrum. You are a speech and language pathologist, but this book is not only SLP, this is about occupational therapy as well. That's an interesting combination. How did that come to pass? It's an interesting one and a great one. Um, you know, as, as we work with children, we each have our various areas. I work, of course, on communication and they work on sensory and motor. Well, when you put those two together, you really can get the best of both worlds and you really can get the kids doing things they would never do with you alone. Um, the occupational therapist is providing the, the just right challenges for the motor and sensory and we're there with the communication piece and it's just a wonderful combination of I've seen children thrive in this environment more mm -hmm. than they would individual one-to-one -one mm -hmm. or with just one expert there. Now the way this book is written it's not only for parents and caregivers it's for teachers but one of the things that I noticed you focus on is as much as we all want the final results it's really the process that's most important. Can you talk a little bit about that focus? I can. The process is, is the only thing that's important in, in our eyes. Um, we don't need the, the finished product to be polished. What we do need is the kids interacting. We, want, we actually you know, want them to make mistakes and learn. We all learn from our mistakes. If they spill a little water, that's okay. No one's going to um, you know, be upset. Um, what I see lots and lots of times is a lot of folks running up helping and, and over helping our kids and what we need to do is sit on our hands a little bit, let them ask for help, let them try, let them experiment and they always, always, always figure it out if we just give them enough time. Yeah, that patience thing is real hard for a lot of it, us because we expect some, we expect perfection. We do. Now, one of the things I know about you, just simply based on how you like to test out all the apps for apps for autism, is in this new book, in working with this occupational therapist, I know mm -hmm. you tested out a lot of these programs. Do you have some success stories? Do you have some testimonials you can tell us about? Oh, we have success stories almost every day. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite success story is actually a whole class story. Um, these are older students who come in and they're um, on the spectrum. They're pretty severe. And they each, when we first met these kids, were in their own worlds, you know, doing their own things in, in their heads. Mm -hmm. And um, they would come into our room and not even know how to get their own chair to push up to the table. Um, so after, I'm going to say, six months of working, they're coming in, they're getting their own chairs, they're greeting as they come in, they're sitting down, they're ready to work, and they're listening. They're listening to directions. Um, they're actually interacting with each other, they're using their hands, they're communicating, it's wonderful. And when they're done, they clean up, put their chairs away, and they say goodbye, which never happened before. Now, this, never, so. this book actually presents the best techniques to use, is that correct? So it, it's, is it sort of a cookbook sort of approach for both parents and teachers? Um, it's not so much a cookbook sort of approach, it's trying to teach everyone the technique kind of, um, we like to call it guerrilla therapy, where you don't forget about pragmatics just because you're working on cutting with scissors. And you don't forget about communication just because you're making a quesadilla. You work on it all together. You want pragmatics, you want listening, you want turn taking, you want fine motor, you want to bring in all the sensory stuff, describing, and you can do anything and just use this whole guerrilla therapy technique. So it's, it's really not the cookbook, it's it can be used on any project you choose, you know, whether it's putting on socks or mowing the lawn. You can <laughs> use these kinds of techniques. So it's the whole event approach. It's the whole scenario, but you've Correct. broken it down Correct. into separate parts. Correct. Gosh, that's fantastic. Lois, as always, it's a delight to hear what you're up to, and it's a delight to see your work. I don't know how we'd be getting along in this field of autism if it wasn't for people like you. <laughs> Thank you. I want to say thank you for what you do. I hope when you come up with your next book or something new of interest that you'll give us a call and we can bring these messages to Autism Hangout. Of course I will. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Craig. And thank you, Autism Hangout. I'll be back again soon with another special report.